Good morning. Have you ever asked yourself why is waking up early for work more difficult than waking up early on like on the weekend? I'm currently packing my bag, the modern day fairer, for a short one day business trip to Berlin. I'm kind of whispering because everyone is already asleep. So I'm packing this bag and I'm going to do a short vlog about this business trip. It's just a one day I'm going there early in the morning and going back in the evening. But because I have already reviewed the modern day fairer, I will use this opportunity to, instead of just doing a review, I'm gonna take you on a small little vlog of me using this bag and yeah, maybe a little bit of a day in the life of a professional film editor. If you are on this YouTube channel and have watched me for a while, you probably only know me as a bag reviewer and YouTuber, but I am actually a freelance film editor and I edit commercials, TV commercials, web commercials and stuff like that. And to kind of explain what I'm doing on this day, on this trip to Berlin. I'm just gonna set the stage about this video, why I'm going to Berlin, but also to explain or to showcase what I am using the modern day Ferra V2 for, or what I pack for this day, or why I pack it. Predominantly, I work from home remotely on my own workstation. But on this day, I'm going to the client and for that I'm going to a so-called post-production house where I have a workstation on which I present or showcase the film that I have edited the last few days. And because I am editing or working on a different workstation where many people work on a daily basis and most of the time there is just a keyboard that I personally do not like or maybe a magic mouse. I do prefer bringing my own peripherals like my mechanical keyboard and my Logitech MX Master mouse. So to quickly show you what I'm packing, I have this small little pouch that actually JB outside gave me. This is now my extended EDC. I have the Bellroy Cariology pencil case that I use as a boo-boo kit that has ibuprofen, band-aids and stuff like that. My favorite tech pouch, the Evergoods Cap 2 with my mouse chargers and everything then here i have my mechanical keyboard the timber keyboard and a power bank this is a new one from aoni which i like a lot because it's actually dual purpose it is on one side it's a 40,000 milliampere hour battery bank but also can be used in a desktop mode so you can connect it to your power outlet and then connect all of your devices like phone or computer or laptop to this and then it kind of acts as a power brick as well which i like a lot so this is the new version of the modern day ferro now with the v-buckle fit lock x-pack fabric and again sorry that i'm whispering it's late at night everyone is at sleep and i don't want to wake anyone so yeah out of this green x-pack fabric with v-buckle style but overall it's basically the modern day ferro backpack that we all know so I finally arrived in Berlin at the post-production house. What I can say right away about the modern day Farah, you can fit a bunch of stuff in it. And what I really like in the train that I was able to fit it underneath the seat. So you won't have any trouble putting it underneath the seat in an airplane, for instance. So most of you probably know the term editing or film editing, but I still get the question quite a lot. What does a film editor do and why is it so much work to create a 20 second commercial? So let me just quickly get over what I'm doing today and what my job actually is. As a film editor, as the name implies, I edit films, or in this case, when I'm going to Berlin, a commercial for a fragrance company. When I get to a job, obviously the final product is only a 30 second commercial. However, the director and his or her whole team shoot, and in this case, shoot two days on three cameras. Therefore, once I start the process of editing, I receive a lot of footage that they 
film during the day. They obviously don't film just 30 seconds. In this case, they almost shot 10 hours of footage. So what my job is in this case is to look through all of that footage, all of the 10 hours, pick the best pieces and then assemble a story. Usually they have a storyboard and you have a determined story that you want to tell in that commercial. But with fragrances or with fashion, you have a main story, but there is a lot of flexibility in how you present that story or the product and that's what I love about fragrance but also fashion commercials. You have a lot of creative freedom to tell that specific story that the client is looking for. In this case you have 10 hours of footage. It's not 10 hours of just one scene. It's multiple scenes that they shot and then you added all of those scenes together to make one big amazing story and 30 second film out of that. So that's why it takes so much time because physically you have this 10 hours of footage but obviously you don't watch them just like in a movie. It's not 10 hours to look at you because you rewind, you fast forward, you replay, you select and you rewatch it again. I always say I need a factor of 2.5 so if I have one hour of footage I at least need two and a half hours to look through that footage to make my selects and then I start editing because it is so creatively flexible, I, there are many options to edit this kind of film. And that's what I have been doing the last few days. And now that I'm going to Berlin, I'm showing this film to the agency. We discuss everything, we do minor changes. And in this case, we actually did a lot of changes, not because the film that the director and I made is bad, but because they obviously also have a creative vision on that. And in this case, we had a lot of constructive discussions, so I wasn't able to film a lot, unfortunately. It's 10 p.m. and I honestly miserably failed to vlog during the day. I just got back from Berlin with the train and yeah, as I said, I miserably failed to vlog and document my day. I'm not sure how I'm going to edit this, but yeah, let's see. I think the takeaway of this video is probably that vlogging is not as easy as one might think, at least vlogging in an interesting way. So I'm back in my car on my way home. As I said, I just arrived at Hamburg Central Station. I'm leaving the parking space for 25 euros per day. Which is uh, crazy how expensive it is. So to kind of sum up my day and the plan to vlog, show my life as a fil freelance film editor and also kind of document how I use the modern day Ferrer wasn't as successful as I was anticipating or as I was hoping. I imagined in my head that I would kind of film the whole day, then kind of talk a little bit about the modern day Pharaoh. But yeah, long story short, I failed in my hopes to actually take you along my day. As you can see, I'm still struggling with this vlogging process. I really wanted to do this, but the day was very hectic, very busy, lots of discussions while we were editing and it wasn't as easy as I was. Can I move here? Can I go here? Yeah, I can turn left. I want to turn left. Yes. So we had a lot of discussions. I was always with four clients. So that made it very difficult for me to actually pull out the camera and kind of film and not even be able to actually talk in front of the camera. Also being outside and talking to a camera, it feels so weird. It is, I feel so self-conscious about it, but I just want to do this more. I want to film more outside and yeah, create content while I'm on the 
to go and hopefully get more comfortable talking in front of the camera. Filming isn't that big of a deal outside, for instance filming a bag or something, but when people are around, like in these situations where there are clients and we were working, of course, it wasn't that easy as I was hoping for because we were always talking and we always had something to discuss. Um, well, I think that guy in front of me is drunk. Feels like it. Um, yeah, but it's all about practicing, right? Practice, practice, practice. And therefore I bought this camera, the DJI Pocket 3, to have it always with me and to be comfortable doing this kind of stuff and provide you with more content and hopefully better content that is much more interesting. Maybe let's talk a little bit about the modern day Ferro. The bag was amazing during the day because I was able to fit a lot of stuff in there and it did not get in my way when carrying it. It was very comfortable with all of the gear inside. I was able to fit it underneath my seat in the train and it looks good. I think this update, I wasn't always the biggest fan of the modern day Ferro in terms of the fit lock but the v-buckle style is really cool and i do like this x-pack fabric especially in the green one thing that i noticed that i might would flag as a flaw as a negative this bag is somewhat of a i would say clamshell top loading hybrid while the strap of the flap down closing is adjustable in terms of length it is not as expandable as you might would suspect yes you can kind of fill it up to the brim extend that strap and then hope that the flap kind of adjusts to the contents inside but the flap itself is fairly stiff there is a stiff sheet in there so you can kind of bend it a little bit but it's not as if it would be a soft fabric that kind of in air quotes molds to the contents inside so if the bag is really really full and you kind of overload it and you think oh i can just adjust that one strap and then hope that the top flap kind of folds over to accommodate the bigger load inside it is somewhat possible but it's not that great it is a bag that you can fit all your stuff in but do not expect once all your stuff is in there that you for instance go grocery shopping then put some more stuff in there because you think that you can overpack the bag and the top is adjustable it's not that kind of bag but for work it is amazing it's a cool bag there is the shoe compartment at the bottom personally i never utilize these kind of extra pockets it might be good to have for some people to kind of separate maybe dirty or wet clothing but once you put shoes in there it obviously expands into the main compartment and therefore is taking away space inside the bag so it's good to have personally i would never use it the front quick access compartment it's just like the top flap the front is not as flexible and expandable like on other bags where yeah the fabric is a little bit more malleable and flexible so when the main compartment is fully loaded that front compartment isn't as flexible adaptable and spacious as you might hope you can't put any thicker items in there as easily as you might hope so it is a good to have quick access compartment but it's not as usable as you might think there is a side quick access compartment that is a little bit better in terms of what you can fit inside but it also expands slightly to the inside and the fuller the main compartment is the more cramped those two compartments on the side and on the front will get so yeah keep that in mind if you want to utilize those two compartments the side quick access compartment has some organization in there to mesh 
slots that I tried to utilize or I utilized them but again my main compartment was pretty full so getting stuff inside and outside of that compartment and especially into those slots wasn't as easy as I was hoping for but yeah obviously I filled up my main compartment to the brim I actually have the Evergoods Cap 2 my extended EDC and the pouch that I forgot the name of the Bellroy Carryology pencil case the AOE power bank my Sennheiser HD 25 headphones in the bottle compartment I have an isolated coffee mug because I am very picky with my coffee and I was in the train for two hours so I made my coffee myself and and what else did I pack anything else that I might oh yeah of course my mechanical keyboard so the main compartment was pretty full oh also my Samsung tablet although I was working on my phone I just took my tablet with me just to be safe so you are able to fit a lot of items into the bag so yeah I would say overall a great bag as I said in the introduction I already reviewed the first version and the second normal version I reviewed a couple of times so you can see those videos in the info tab above but this is a slightly updated version as I said with the Fitlock V buckle and the X-Pack fabric in this great olive green. If I had to decide between all of the modern day versions I would always go with this version and I can highly recommend it. Yeah check out those reviews for further details and yeah maybe also let me know about this vlog style review. Did you like it? As I said I failed in executing this vlog properly but I hope you liked it anyways and I hope I was able to salvage all of this footage in the edit. Let me know do you like this kind of style do you want me to take you with me on a daily basis a little bit more of course i have my second channel where i do these smaller vlogs but i mean these kind of bigger vlogs do you want to see more of that let me know in the comment section below and if you have any more questions maybe about the bag maybe about my work about my day let me know in the comment section below and if you enjoyed this video click the like button and please feel free to subscribe to my channel and click that little bell icon so you won't miss next videos also check out my instagram and as i said my second channel and and my podcast at you know the bow stay safe and healthy everyone always drive safe i don't have my display on so i won't get distracted and yeah i see you in the next videos thank you very much